So let's continue with the program that we've been working with, the one that declares variables and goes and gets information and loads up those variables and converts strings to integers since all data that comes back from the prompt is a string. It does a calculation to find out a final grade and then we had an if statement and that if statement said if the final grade is greater than or equal to 90 then return an A or uh, sorry assign the letter A as a character string to the variable if it's greater than or equal to 80 B C D and otherwise because you remember else is the garbage collector do an F another way we could have written this is we could have said that if the grade is greater than or equal to 90 and the final grade is less than or equal to 100. So this actually says, we're going to close that whole thing inside of one set of parentheses, this slash slash, which when you look at your keyboard, is the backslash key, but shift held on it. And it's called a pipe symbol. And so this pipe pipe stands for or. So this is now saying if the final grade is greater than or equal to 90 or it's less than or equal to 100. Now think, will that work? That means if it's a 91, that's true. A true or a true is equal to true. That would work. But let's say the number was 50. If 50 is greater than or equal to 90, true or false? That's false. Or is 50 less than or equal to 100? That's true. A false or a true results in this whole thing becoming true. So the number 50 would still equal an A. Wouldn't you like that in your class? So the pipe sign is the OR. And the OR says only one thing has to be true. It looks like this. Whoops. Not the keyword this, but that was pretty funny. It did that. So that says a true or a true is equal to a true. A true or a false equals to a true. A false or a true equals to true and a false or a false equals to false. And depending on this evaluating to a true means it does this. If it evaluates to a false, then it moves on to the else. So let's try this symbol instead. Ampersand, ampersand, which is your shift seven. That now stands for the letter and. So this says if final grade is greater than or equal to 90 and the final grade is less than or equal to 100. Let's try it with the number 50, which we know didn't work last time. If final grade has a value of 50 and it's greater than or equal to 90, false, and the final grade is less than or equal to 100, true. So this is now a false and a true. Well, when you're working with ands, a true and a true equals true. A true and a false equals false. A false and a true, which is what we have in our case, is equal to false. And a false and a false equals false. So in order for this whole statement to evaluate to a true, everything has to be true. So this actually would work for us if we wanted to do it this way. You could break it up and use a double ampersand. And that's called a truth table for your AND and your OR symbol. The AND is the Ampress Ampress, and the Pipe Pipe represents the OR. Now, how does that actually help us? Well, we could use this and do combinations of expressions. If final grade is greater or equal to 90 AND the student name is equal to Mickey. 
then they'll get an A. That now means if the student name was not Mickey, they're going to get a B. Because it would be, let's say they got 100. Mickey got 100. So here's Mickey's grade. He got 100. 100 greater than or equal to 90. True. And student name equals Mickey. True. They get an A. What if Mickey got a, um, well, let's say we had another one. Let's say we had Daffy. Daffy got 100. Is 100 greater than or equal to 90? True. And is the student name equal to Mickey? False. A true and a false equals false. So it would drop down to this one. And it would say if the final grade is greater than or equal to 80. True. So Daffy gets a B. What if we did this? Let's change that to be an or. And let's say that Mickey had a score of 50. If the final grade is greater than or equal to 90, true or false? False. Or the student name is equal to Mickey. True. So that student would still get an A. So can you see that you can use the logical operators, your ands and ors, and you can combine them with other expressions if you wanted something to be more complex. Let's keep moving on. This is our if statement. We understand that now. Let's put uh, all of this inside of commented code. So we're going to comment out the if statement. And instead of using an if statement, I want to use what they call a switch statement. Switch. The switch statement is like an if statement. And it says the following. Go check the value of final grade. And then down here we say case. 90. Letter grade is equal to A. Default. letter grade is equal to F. So what this is saying now, if the final grade is equal to 90, give it an A. Otherwise, that's your else. The default is an else. Otherwise, you get an F. Now, cases are interesting because what if I wanted to do this? If greater than equal to 90. And JavaScript, see the red line? JavaScript is saying, you can't do that. That's illegal. Okay, well, what if I did this? Final grade. If final grade is greater than or equal to 90, and I did a final grade right there. Let's save this and copy all that code and go over here into the browser and let's try to run that. Control Shift I to get the inspector, paste it in. Let's run it. Great, the name. We'll say it's Mickey again. Hundreds, we're going to get straight hundreds on everything. 100. Mickey earned 100%, which is an F. Well, that didn't seem fair. But something was weird there. They had 100% and they got an F. When we drop into this switch statement, we said if the final grade is greater, greater than 90, greater than or equal to 90, they should get an A. Switch statements don't work this way. You can't do an expression like this with the expression there. What we would have to do one way is this. You have to list every single possible value if you want to do a range. 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, and so forth. In fact, let's just do it for the 100. So it's 96, 97, 98, 99, 100. Let's run that one more time and see if it now works. Paste it into here. Run it. Mickey, hundreds on everything. Whoops, something happened still. Mickey earned 100, which is still an F. So when we come back here and look at this one more time, for some reason, it's it should have said the letter grade is equal to A. We know that 100 was right there, and it should have worked. Well, here's what happens with case statements. 
case statements say once you evaluate to a true value everything is true from then on now what does that mean well let's try one more case let's put this here we'll paste those in and let's backspace it and right here we'll get rid of that one and now we're gonna say 89 88 And if they get that, we'll say a B. Whoops, sorry about that. We're going to go ahead and change this. There we go. We'll make that a B still. And we'll make that an F. Actually, let's just get rid of the default so you can see that it really works. Okay? So there's our new case. We're saying go check the value of final grade. If it's 100, 98, 99, 98, 97, 65, 4, 3, 2, 1, 90, give it an A. Otherwise, if it's 89 through 80, give it a B. Let's save that. Come back here and run it one more time. Mickey, this time Mickey didn't do well. Mickey got an 80 on everything. Mickey got a B. That's great. That's exciting. It seems like it works now, right? Let's run it one more time. See what happens. Mickey had a change of plans and now started working again. They got hundreds on everything. Mickey still gets a B. Because what's happening on a switch statement is that once you evaluate to true, every case is true. So when this evaluated to a true, all of this is now true. And that's the last thing that gets executed, so Mickey now gets a B. What you do to get out of that problem is you say the word, break. So let's try this one more time. Now we're saying check all of these. If it's one of those, assign the letter A and do a break, which now gets you out of the switch statement. Let's run it one more time. Come back over to here. And we'll paste in our code. And we're going to give Mickey a hundred. Whoops, Mickey. It's 100 on everything. Now Mickey got an A. And why is that? Let's take a look at the code again. Because we said 100, true, letter grade equals A. Break, get out of the switch statement. And so it continues where the switch left off. Let's put the default back in. And in the default, let's go ahead and say they get an F, back to an F, okay? Let's copy that, come back over to here, let's run it. We'll try Mickey with a hundreds, he gets an A, let's run it again. Try Mickey with 80s. It's a B. Let's run it again. We'll try Mickey. This time Mickey gets 70s. And Mickey gets an F. So once again, let's review. On the case statement, if you want a range, you have to specify every case. And you have to make sure you include a break if you want to exit out after something is found true. The default says I'm the else statement. Now let me show you one more trick because as you can now see writing a switch statement to, a, to do a range of values stinks compared to doing this. There are, there are tricks we can do to make it look a little bit better. And here's what we're going to do. First of all, when we take a look at this switch statement, we've been specifying what we're going to evaluate. Let's just change that to the word true, meaning, yes, go do a switch statement. That's all that means. Go do a switch statement. Now what we can do is come into here and say final grade greater than equal 90. Let's do the same thing. We'll get rid of all those. 
still need your break statement. Final grade greater than equal 80. Let's try to run that one more time and see if it works. Come back over to our browser, paste in our code, run it. Mickey, we'll try the hundreds. Gets an A. Run it again. Mickey, let's do the 80s. He gets a B. So that actually is a trick when working with the switch statement if you want to do a range. A lot of people, though, if they're going to do ranges, they'll just do the if statement. And that's how the switch statement works. It's just a glorified if statement that allows you to break things down into cases. But you got to make sure you remember, once a case evaluates to true, you have to put the word break in or everything's going to happen after that. It just says, oh, everything's true, and it keeps evaluating.